Hello and welcome back. My name is Domika O'Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media. So today's topic of conversation is a little program called 3D Coat. And if you have seen any of my other videos or seen any of my uh, two-hour weapon uh, modeling videos that I that I have put here on YouTube on the channel, then you've probably seen Coat in action as well as some other programs like Marmoset, to name a few. But 3D Coat is a program that's very near and dear to my heart. I love it. I love 3D Coat so much. So Coat is made by a company called Pilgue. 3D Coat allows you to not only paint your models, but also retopologize them, also UV them, and you can sculpt them in two sculpting modes. You can sculpt in surface mode, which is something that's very familiar if you are a mud box user or a ZBrush user, then you're used to working in a polygonal mode, but you can also work in a voxel-based sculpting method, which um, the makers of ZBrush, they actually have Sculptress, which is their free little uh, sculpting program. It uses voxels. Now, I will say that Coat was using voxels every, way before Sculptress tried to use, started using voxels over at Pixelogic. But either way, it's not a battle about that. It's about finding out the, the programs that work into your software workflow that are going to make things easy for you. So what we can do, what we can actually do inside of here. So with looking at the different kind of modes inside of here, inside of Coat, we're going to deal today primarily with unwrapping as well as painting inside of 3D Coat. So I'm not going to be looking at all the things in this first video. So I'm going to make this like a little bit of a series. So it's going to be a 3D coat series, like an intro to 3D coat series. Um, so the first things I want to look at is the unwrapping and the uh, the actual painting here inside of coat. Now, coat has a couple of different ways it can paint on your model, and a couple of different ways. It has one way. It has two ways it can UV your model, and kind of four different ways that you can paint on your model. One of, those UV, one of those UV methods is not really UVing at all. It's this little guy right here, which is P-Text, paint with P-Text. P-Text is almost like an atlasing uh, type of way of looking at UVing. You don't traditionally UV with P-Text. P-Text basically takes every um, polygon of your model, lays it down flat, and keeps an atlas kind of Cartesian reference for that individual polygon for your model, but it does it for you automatically. So you, there really is no unwrapping process. Now, before you start screaming and yaying and, and saying, down with UVs, down with UVs, you have to remember that PTEC currently right now only works for rendering methods that are gonna be for film and animation. Uh, game engines right now, at least as far as I am aware of, there are not game engines that use the PTEC format for textures. Now. I'm not going to say that's not going to change in the future because, hey, you know, they're adding new stuff to game engines all the time, and hopefully maybe they'll add PTEX in the future for things. I, I don't know. I would think it would be a lot of overhead to have something like PTEX running. Uh, the closest thing that we've had to something like PTEX for games would probably be the Mega Textures, um, that id software with the id tech that came out with Rage because those were a gigantic uh, alias, it was a gigantic atlas texture sheet that was being used to map entire sections of the world. And you can see from the way Rage's technology worked, you know, it kind of worked, kind of didn't work. Um, so keep that in mind. Now traditionally we want to unwrap our model, lay it flat, and then be able to paint on it. Now inside of Coat you have three different painting methods. You can do per pixel painting, which is right here. This is traditionally just like what you would do inside of Photoshop. This is very much traditional pixel painting. And then you also have micro vertex painting, which still lets you paint on the actual model, but instead of painting normal maps, you're painting displacement maps. And then the last type of painting you have is vertex painting. Now game engines do actually support vertex painting, meaning that your vertices can hold actual textured information or color information. And this is a technique we've had for a very long time in the gaming world. Um, and I don't know why people don't use it more often, at least as novices, but I know in the, in, you know, as far as in the industry, we do use vertex painting a lot. It, it's a great way to be able to layer maps on top of a model um, and get that extra added level of uh, detail. 
Now, the other thing with 3D Coat, 3D Coat is also a PBR um, shader compliant painting system at this point. They added the PBR shaders to uh, Coat right around version 4.5. So you can actually paint with physically accurate shaders that you make yourself, and they have some examples that are already in here. They call, inside of 3D Coat, they're called smart materials. So you'll see this little panel over here, and these are the smart materials. These are all PBR um, accurate shaders. So they, they actually have, you know, um, subsurface uh, or m actually micro vertex um, or micro, me, micro surface rather uh, scratches and you you have things like your mentalness map you have things like glossiness you have things like your curvature map curvature maps are awesome so let's stop yammering about all this stuff and let's actually get in here inside of coat and start picking this stuff apart so I'm gonna go in here and say I want to paint per pixel I'm gonna open up my file and I'm gonna open up this OBJ. Now you you can bring OBJs, you can bring FBX files in here. This particular file though, I brought it in as an OBJ because I had issues bringing this file in as an FBox file. And it's not coat, it's the actual, something with the geometry. I, I actually snagged this uh, head from over at TurboSquid. It was one of the free models over at TurboSquid. So I grabbed it from over there. So let's look at some of the some of the options when you first bring your model in. When I first bring my model in, you can see that I can set the preset for what I'm going to be exporting this out to. So I could say it's going to go out to Maya, it's going to go out to Blender, 3D Max, or you know, to Substance Designer, to Unity, Unreal, because all of them have a little bit of different, a little bit of a different way that they read normal maps. I'm just going to leave it on Maya 2015 Plus. And then it says no subdivision, so I'm, I'm not going to subdivide my model. And then UV map typing, I can say auto map it, or I'm going to say right now, I'm just going to say keep UV. And then UV set smoothing, no smoothing for my UV set. And then I also can swap the, the Y and the Z axis. This is, this is important because in some programs, the Z axis is considered up, such as max. Inside of max, Z is up and not for depth. And then also, if you were doing this, if you were actually using tiles, so you had multi-tile textures or UDMI uh, textures, you could bring in tiles here into Coat. And then you can actually triangulate your mesh when you bring it in. You can weld stray vertices. You can even invert normals. You can lock your normals. And then no center snaps. And then auto smoothing groups. So you can kind of automatically smooth your stuff at, out. And then treat materials as separate textures. So if you have if you have a if you have a model that has separate materials already assigned to it, or some, when you bring it in here, you can say treat all of those as separate textures. So all of those materials would have their own textures, and you could paint on each each one of those individually and not have one gigantic uh, texture sheet. So I also need to pick the text the texture width and height. So it's going to be square. So 2048 by 2048. So a 2K texture. I'm going to hit OK. So we're going to hit OK and let this actually open up our file here inside of Coat. Now, if you've not used Coat before, Coat has Maya style controls or Maya like controls. Now, if you have your mouse over your model, if you have your mouse over your model, if you hold the Alt key down, hold down the Alt key, and then left mouse click, you're able to orbit your camera. Uh, middle mouse click, you're able to zoom in and you're able to orbit, you're able to dolly your camera in and out. And then your uh, right, your middle mouse, so your left mouse rather lets you orbit, right mouse lets you dolly in and out, and then middle mouse lets you pan your camera. And I already know I need to change my stylus. I'm actually using a Wacom tablet. So I'm going to change this from double click and make this an actual click and I make it my middle mouse click so the top part the kind of top button so now I have access to be able to hold down the alt key and then middle mouse click and you see that pans my camera so alt and, and middle mouse pans my camera alt and right mouse dollies it and then alt and left mouse actually orbits it now if you have your mouse or your stylus out here when you're not over top of your model you don't have to hold down the alt key 
if you just if you have your cursor out here you can then just use the middle mouse right mouse and left mouse buttons without holding down the alt key but when you're on top of your model you have to hold down the alt key so that your camera movements can be um, seen so either way right now I brought this in here if I try to paint on this right now it's not really gonna let me paint because the UV is r ridiculous and you can see look at that when I try to paint on this right now because the UV is there are no UVs it's just kind of throwing things everywhere which this is not what we want this is insane so I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna show you how we can unwrap this face so I'm gonna jump over here to the UV section and inside of the UV section you'll see there are some UV seams already on this but if I look over here in my UV preview window all of my UVs are basically just stacked on top of each other nothing's really been unwrapped in UV correctly it's just all sitting there which is not what we want so I'm gonna come in here and first thing I want to do is I want to clear all seams so I'm clearing all the seams that are being that are made inside of my model all together and you can see the texture that it has on here for me to check with this has no rhyme or reason to it it's all over the place so I'm gonna start marking seams so a really nice thing here inside of coat is that if I hold down the shift key it lets me select loop edges so you can see right here if I hold shift I can get this loop edge so if I go in here and go right here it lets me get that loop edge up into there so I'm just marking the seams of this now what's really cool about being able to mark the seams is that as I'm marking the seams I'm telling this how I want it to unwrap itself so just kind of going to set this. I'm going to go around the back of the ear like this. Not like that. That's crazy. So I'm going to hold down shift and just get that loop edge right there. Now, the other thing that I can do, I can turn on the symmetry function here. So if I come up here to the top, say symmetry, and I'm going to say right now I'm gonna say symmetry so go to the symmetry menu say symmetry and turn on the symmetry axis I can see right now my axis for symmetry is going to be the x-axis I'm gonna turn off I don't want to see the symmetry plane I just I just need it turned on so I'm gonna say uncheck show symmetry plane and when I do that you'll notice when I move my when I move my mouse around right now you'll see there's a matching little dot on the other side so when I make selections if I came in here right now and made this selection you'll see it got the whole loop all around the head it went all the way around the head and got it which is what I want so I'm just gonna and as I mouse over this stuff you'll see it shows me previews of what the unwrap is gonna look like as I go through this so let's go here let's break the mouth out by itself because we can all right and I'm gonna cut some release some relief cuts on this now remember I'm not actually cutting this this is just making it's just marking seams and when I hit the unwrap function it will unwrap all of this let's unwrap the eyes separately and I'm gonna go and get the nostril in here so I'm not gonna I'm not using let's get that let's break those guys out it's gonna have that where I can have it it's a little bit where I can get in here and so I can get up that nose look for them boogies and I'm not going to so I'm just gonna make a line right here and what this line is gonna do is give me a relief on that cut so you'll see now when it's unwrapping this it'll lay it flat and not be just you know sitting there like that uh, that looks good that looks good these ears are what's gonna give me you know some kind of issues ears are always a pain in the buttocks as Forrest Gunt once said 
Now you can take away from this, you can take away from your selection. If you hold down the control key, the control key will take away from your selection or from, uh, yeah, from your markings. So I actually like that.